The drive from Forest Mills, north of Napanee, Ontario, to Wellington in Prince Edward County is a highly scenic one. We leave the Van Wert Farm on County Road 12 to Forest Mills, then proceed south on Buttermilk Falls Road and the Aero Strait Deserado Road or Highway 10. We drive west through Deserado on Highway 2, then turn south on Highway 49 across the Skyway Bridge. From here itself to Picton, with the long reach of the Bay of Quinney to our left. From Picton, we drive west on Highway 33 or the Loyalist Parkway to Wellington and West Lake. The day trip begins with Bill and Sue Van Wart on the Van Wart Farm. Bill and Sue are retired school teachers who raise horses and enjoy the country life. We head down the driveway. There's a lot of wildlife in the area, including coyotes. The area is very scenic and we had in an enjoyable one week stay with the Van Warts. Now we turn west onto Country Road 12. I can't help but notice the verdant vegetation and the amount of swamps and small lakes in the area. We reach Forest Mills on the Salmon River. Salmon used to run on this river until the 1840s when the area was settled and the river dammed for flour mills and sawmills. Today there is little left of the flour mills but the area is highly scenic and prized by artists. Turning south onto Buttermilk Falls Road, we follow the Salmon River. Timber was once used for alternating farm buildings, but now it's more expensive. The road's been cut in many places through the limestone overlay. We pass on an abandoned church that's been boarded up. The Salmon River is cut through the limestone, requiring great expense to complete this small road. This empty hill, United Church, was built in 1912 and is over a century old. Crossing the 401, we proceed south on the Deserado Road, then turn west onto Highway 2 through Deserado. Deserado's character owes much to the Mohawk tribe, whose reservation was granted by the British for their support during the American Revolution. The Deserando Pentecostal Church is one of many in the area. In the 1800s, Deserando was very prosperous with 4,000 people based on a thriving shipbuilding 
timber and mineral industry, but it's fallen on hard times and the population is now 2,000. This petrol station or gas station is owned by the mobile There we go. And sells discounted gas. We turn south onto Highway 49 and pass many Mohawk businesses as we approach the Skyway Bridge over the Bay of Quinty. This bridge is a substantial engineering project and it's quite amazing. There's no doubt about it, Highway 49 is in bad repair, like many Canadian highways. The winter frost plays havoc with these roads. Long Reach is to our left, and we see many cement trucks from a large cement refining plant. Picton, with a population of 4,000, is a thriving little community with an excellent tourist business. The Crystal Palace, built in 1890, is modeled after the one in England. Main Street in Picton has many historic buildings dating back to the 1800s. The area was first settled in the late 1830s. Oops, Jamie nearly hits the car. We stop at Books and Company to admire the books and have a coffee. It's time to push on. We're getting hungry. We continue our trip down Main Street. Even in the hamlet of Picton, the traffic is heavy and progress is slow, marred by many traffic lights. The fast food places Tim Hortons and McDonald's seems to have ended up at this end of town. It's time to get out into the country. We're headed to Waring's Corner and the Waring Hotel Reception Center. The area is incredibly large and well laid out. It boasts of an excellent restaurant and we're looking forward to Tap Guinness. We eat a lovely meal in this limestone building built in the 19th century by the Waring family. We now move along on Highway 33 to Bloomfield. This highway is also known as the Loyalist Parkway. After the American Revolution, a number of uh, British citizens fled United States and came to Canada where they were granted land. Most of Prince Edward County was granted to
to Loyalists. Bloomfield is a small town. I remember chiefly because my father used to buy us ice cream here when we were traveling through Prince Edward County. Our goal now is to reach Wellington. Rick Halsey and Shona McLaughlin, who married, were friends during the 1960s when I was attending primary and high school. They bought this property on Westlake near Wellington where Rick Halsey runs a casting factory producing stainless steel objects. Rick has invited us behind the factory to his house where we meet and have a tour of the factory. It's quite a fascinating experience watching how molds are made of objects and then filled with stainless steel. This factory in the early days used to be a dairy farm. Rick is fortunate to own such a large property along West Lake, which overlooks Lake Ontario. Here's their uh, trailer and uh, house. And there they are. We found them. There's Rick with Sue Van Mort and a little display by Sue. My goodness. Hi, Rick. Well, we're about to tour the factory where it's too dark to film. That's the end of this short movie. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you got some taste of this part of Eastern Ontario. <laughs>